Welcome to the Midweek Market Update, where I do a technical analysis and give you my thoughts on SPY, the Qs, and IWM. We'll also take a quick tour through our core list of companies listed here. And at the very end of the video, I've got three additional trade ideas to share with you. So definitely stay tuned for that. Let's kick things off in our S&P analysis, as we always do with the sectors, who was leading, who was losing, and where was the weight. The XLF for the financial sector led the pack today, up 2.59%. And the XLC for communications was down at the quote unquote bottom of the barrel, Still green, but green the least amount, up 0.86%. In terms of heavier weighted sectors, we do know that the XLF is the second heaviest weighted sector, so nice to see that at the top of the list. However, as we check in on that chart in just a moment, we'll notice that the location actually isn't all that promising. In terms of our heaviest weighted sector of them all, that's the XLK for tech, up 2.17%, a solid gain on the day, supporting the move higher in the marketplace. And then the XLV for the third heaviest weighted sector, up 1.51%. Let's check in on these charts now and just talk about location, trend, all of that good stuff. In the XLK for your tech sector, the primary focus as of right now is this short-term bull flag that's starting to form. If you don't want to call it a bull flag because you think the daily downtrend's too aggressive, fine, but do call it and acknowledge that this is a four-day balance period and it's coming off of a higher low, right? So we have low and we have currently a higher low that's in place around 150. Because in the very short term, so on a bar by bar perspective, we have a low and a higher low here, and we're back at the top end of this balance area, I would start to lean on this as a bit of a pressure cooker top and a breakout point into the remainder of the week. 154.60 is the number to watch out for. If that can break out, then what do we have? A new higher high, correct? So going back to trend analysis, in the short term, we would have a low, higher low, we have highs, and if it breaks, we would then have the fourth missing piece of the puzzle, a new higher high, thus initiating a new short-term daily uptrend, correct? So that's what I'm watching out for here in the XLK. Now, what would be the upside target? It's coming from prior structure right here, 159 quarter. You'll notice that here's your double top. When that breaks down, it's the first lower high, correct? From here to here, that's why it's the significant target, 159 quarter. If this breaks, we have a range double in effect. And again, it sort of aligns with that structural element of the prior lower high. So I like that to the upside here. I'm not discounting the fact also that we can remain imbalanced, continue to go sideways. In that case, I would probably want to see it do something like this, look above and fail. We return back into the range. We know that the target technically should be the bottom end here, 150. However, when we get to 150, that's going to be your make or break level. Do we potentially still have the opportunity to turn this trend around and get something that looks like that? Or does 150 break? And then we're back on our merry way towards the low here, thus preserving the major or maybe even medium term, I'll, I'll just call it for lack of a better word, trend here, right? So lower high, lower low. If we get the equal low off of a lower high here, obviously that sets up the move and context for a breakdown. Again, I don't think that's the likely scenario based on everything we discussed prior on this chart, but I'm not discounting the fact that it could potentially happen. I'm only getting more bearish in the tech sector if we break down underneath yesterday's low. Again, that number is 150. So that's the tech sector in a nutshell. Let's continue along and talk about the XLF for financials and talk about why the location of this chart is slightly concerning. This is your area of balance, okay? What you'll notice is that we have high, we immediately come back down on this one fell swoop all the way to the low end, which we were supported at here and here. And then when we bounce, this dead cat, the, the lower high, is at half uh, the half mark of the range, half back, correct? So that's fairly concerning. The fact that we're already back down at the bottom end of the range in short proximity of time sets this up as a flush point at 36.85. So even though we posted a solid gain in terms of a percentage move, look at the location, right? This is not nearly as bullish of a setup as what we just saw in our XLK. Now, it doesn't mean that it's going to be enough to drag the marketplace lower, the S&P lower. If the XLK starts to break out of this range and financials kind of hover sideways and drift lower even, you might get a, a a more grindy move in your S&P 500 to the upside, noting that the strength and the uh, weight of the XLK will pull it higher. But if this continues higher, obviously that's going to be a good thing. You'll probably get that added move in your S&P 500. If these are moving in sync, look for a stronger breakout in the S&P 500. And obviously, if this breaks down, like more aggressively does something like this, and your XLF just go, or excuse me, XLK for the tech sector remains in balance, 
that's going to harm your S&P 500. So that's kind of the relationship between the big two right now that I'm really monitoring for and why, again, the location of this chart is fairly concerning in the face of what looks like it may be the reversal in our broad marketplace. We really have to see if financials will start to pull their weight and at least work back towards the midpoint of the range, 39 quarter. All right. That's what I've got for you here. In terms of financial things, let's also take a look at our TNX for the 10-year rate. Uh, and obviously, we had Jerome Powell hop on the microphone today. He didn't really surprise us. We know that there is going to be a 25 basis point uh, rate raise in the month of March here. He also mentioned that obviously the tensions overseas are causing them to kind of slow their pace a little bit. They don't want to provide any additional fear and shock to the marketplace. So that's kind of describing what's going on in your rates right here. Clearly, as the tensions kick off, big move lower because there's uncertainty, right? And then as this sort of quells and Jerome Powell reassures us that, hey, this is still the plan, that's when they pick back up just a little bit on today's session. So that's kind of what's going on in the TNX. Again, I do think in the mind's eye of the market, it only really cares about the headlines coming out of the overseas tensions right now. It's not so much about inflation this or inflation that. Sure, that's still a big deal, and I'm not trying to discredit it, but your market's going to move primarily on those larger, more dramatic headlines coming out of the tensions overseas. So that's what I've got in our TNX. Let's go back on over to our sectors to round things out with your XLV for the healthcare sector. This one looking much more like our IWM. We'll take a look at that in just a moment here. But the best equal low, right? You can see that we didn't produce that significant lower low. It's also not as range bound as your uh, XLF that we just saw. But nonetheless, we don't get aggressively bullish on the reversal here until we take out the neckline of that double bottom at 133.30. All right. So that's what we have to the upside. There's no real clean balance that we can play off of right here. I do still think that this is taking a back seat to everything that's going on in the XLF and the XLK, as I've been a proponent for for the past couple of weeks, correct? So on the upside break of this level, if we can recapture 131, look for the neckline move. If we can't, I would look for more chop kind of sideways underneath 131. That's what we have in our sectors. Let's round out sort of the behind the scenes look with our VIX. And all I want to point out here is that, you know, obviously with the tensions overseas, volatility and fear in the marketplace remain elevated. We're still putting in higher lows on a day by day basis. We don't technically have a higher high greater than that, but nonetheless, volatility is still very elevated. Okay. So be prepared. If we get a break of the S and P daily range for a significant move one way or another, noting that our volatility is just, again, it's just still so high, right? So be aware of that in the VIX again, just to give you an idea of what that actually means, how you can use that information. Let's say E represents your traditional entry. Your traditional target is up here. I'll put T and then down here we have S for stop loss in a high volatility environment. Here's your entry. That doesn't change, your target is going to expand a little bit and so will your stop loss. But please try to keep in mind that these ratios should not change. Okay. So if you're traditionally shooting for a two to one, uh, one and a half to one, something that's realistic, not like a five to one, something crazy, right? Then try to keep those ratios aligned, but do spread your stop and target just a little bit, noting that we should travel some larger ranges. You don't want to get wicked out unintentionally just because volatility is high. That's all I've got to say about that. People are pricing in more volatility in the current moment than they are in the future. Future, so just be prepared for more whipsaws, correct? That's what we've got in the VIX. Let's continue along here and talk about our S&P daily levels, some tradable, actionable stuff if it would load. There we go. Uh, always nice late at night when you're uh, running into loading issues. Regardless, what do we have on the table? Just like everything, well, not everything, but the XLK that we've talked about so far, there's your daily balance, right? If this is going to be a trend reversal, there's your low. Here's your first higher low. Here's our highs. We need to see the break of this balance and a move into our resistance trend line, this prior area of structure. I've been harping on and on and on about 444, 445 as that area of resistance. It's also the daily 200 SMA. I would imagine that there's a strong response from the sellers when and if we do get there, just like in the XLK, because we did produce a higher low and a higher high on today's session from yesterday, we are leaning on this 437 as a breakout point for follow through to the upside, right? Uh, again, I'm not discounting the fact that it could be a look above and fail. If that does happen and we accept back underneath 437, look for the bottom end of the range at 429. That area needs to hold if it's going to produce that higher low still and give us potential for trend reversal over the course of time, right? Something that still looks like this for the higher low. If it breaks down, all about the point of control from last Thursday. Thursday here at 4.17.50. We'll see that on the market profile in just a second. Before we continue along, I do want to take out the Fibonacci's. We haven't done this in a little while. We're going to come in from the top end of where the double top stemmed from to the lows 
and I want to talk about the 61.8 Fibonacci. That's this blue line right here. What we know about Fibonacci analysis is when we can start closing daily bars or multiple bars above the 61.8, it dramatically increases the odds that you get a 100% retracement of the overall move. Notice also it's today's high of day. So if we can get a break of this balance and if we can start accepting anywhere above the balance, aka the 61.8, I do believe that that sets up over the course of time a retracement for the double top here and then we can reassess the charts, right? So to me, the Fibonacci's are telling us a bit of a story as well. And I also want to come in from the lows up to the highs and just reiterate that as of right now, this balance that's happening is completely healthy in terms of bull flag consolidation above our 38.2. So the S&P daily does look pretty good right now for a follow through move to the upside. So that's what we've got there. Let's continue along and talk about our internals. If you're not familiar with this screen, get familiar. Top right hand corner is going to describe what this is, how you can set it up and how it'll help you make better intraday trading decisions. I think what we'll find here is some more evidence that supports the theory of potential breakout into tomorrow's session, right? As of right now, as we're balancing in the range, notice that volume is fairly neutral, a little bit red here. But what I want to point out is today's activity, big inflow into the market. Market. We're traditionally looking for 300 million or more for a significant read. You can see we made it up to 500 million. So solid move on today's session. What's our advanced decliner doing? Clearly up here, getting closer to trend zone. That's a good thing. And again, fairly neutral on the days where we're balancing back and forth. And our cumulative builds on the tick, flat and flat on our neutral days. And as we approach the top of the range, more buying activity, correct? So it is starting to align that the buyers are trying to make a stand here at the top of the range, pushing things up and out. Now, yes, in the after hours as of right now, we're just kind of hovering neutral, uh, you know, not quite at the highs. It's not like we're making a significant run higher, but that doesn't mean that it has to be a breakdown, right? We'll have to reassess when we actually open up tomorrow morning. But as of right now, everything's sort of pointing to, hey, this balance could potentially be breaking out soon and to the upside based on some of the evidence that we've seen, all right? So let's go on over to our market profile now and talk about some some more nuances here. This, of course, is our area of balance. And by the way, if you're not familiar with this software, what we're even looking at, check out this video here in the top right hand corner. I've got yet another one for you. Uh, what's interesting about this is here's your balance, correct? What you'll notice is that in the past, so when it was originating, we have point of control higher, we have point of control lower lower still. And on today's session, the point of control flips once again back to the top end of the range. Okay. So that to me strikes me as a bullish indication. You'll also notice that on today's session, value has also flipped substantially higher. Instead of being overlapping or down, it's actually higher on the day. We also have a double distribution in play. And this is something that I want to lean on into tomorrow's session. If we can accept in the upper distribution. So say the overnight session just does something like this, except in the upper distribution. And I'm just, you know, you can clearly see it's separated by a little single print right here, right? That's what I mean by double distribution. You get this. Let's try to draw. There we go. Cleaning it up and this two distributions. So if we can accept in the upper distribution, that's obviously a more bullish outcome. What would be even more telling, this is something to watch out for here, is if in the overnight session, we dip a toe into the second distribution, the lower distribution, then hook back higher. So there's no acceptance from the sellers back down in that range. That's another bullish indication, right? Indicating that the sellers are getting no traction at those lower prices. So to me, that level and what we want to watch out for is the start of the single prints, the low end of the first distribution. Let's call that 4365, all right? So as long as we're above 4365, I would lean on the bull side, as I've pointed out a number of times here during today's video for the breakout into our daily resistance trend line that we saw on our S&P 500. Obviously, if this breaks down, you're just looking for the rotation back down towards the low of the overall balance. That would be a bearish indication. So watch that level, 43.65 on our ES futures. Let's go back on over to the platform here, round out our broad market, get through our core list, and then I'll share those three additional trade ideas with you. Uh, QQQ, what do we have going on here? Very similar to the XLK. There's your four day balance in place, right back up at the top end of the range, higher low on a bar by bar perspective. However, you'll notice that we are right at the daily resistance trend line. Now it is a secondary, it's not the primary like we have in the S&P 500. So if it does break, you know, there could be some follow through, but it's not, you know, it's not gonna change the overall trend of this to this as a lower high than clearly lower highs here. From the grand scheme of things, yeah, we would need that move up to uh, 369, but one step at a time, right? Let's, let's take this incrementally day by day. So here's your balance. If it breaks out, where does that put us? Kind of back in no man's land. So I would say on a break here, easily look for 353, if not potentially higher. So monitor for continuation 
if we get that move on tomorrow's session, break of the balance highs and resistance trend line. To the downside, we know the same deal. Look above and fail takes us back down to the bottom end of the range here at 337.50. I wouldn't place too much emphasis on this level anymore because if we break these lows, we know it's very likely going to come back down here towards that 329, the point of control from the Thursday of last week and the low of the Wednesday just prior to that. Okay, so that's what we have on our QQQ. Again, lean a little bit more bearish because of all the reasons we've discussed so far today. Those are the numbers to pay attention to. IWM is up next, giving us that double bottom, very similar to the XLF or excuse me, XLV for healthcare. Misspoke there. Uh, regardless, here it is. As of right now, I'm gunning towards the neckline, right? 208 is still that critical area. I know I sound like a broken record, but if we're above, that would start to signal that, hey, maybe it's more risk on marketplace right now. If we, re if we uh, resist here, resist and reject. I always say those two words together and I get reject. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. But if we reject at 208, that's where we're looking for the rollover. That's a more bearish indication. Sure, this would start to pan out as just a horizontal trading range. Something like this could develop into the future. We'll see if we can produce a higher low, something that does this so on and so forth. But 208 is still your pivot in IWM. I know, broken record. I'm saying the same thing over and over again, but it's just, it is what it is based on the structure that we have dead in front of us. To the downside, if we never make it to 208, obviously that's more bearish indication. I would look for the flush only underneath 197.15 for the rotation lower to the bottom end of your daily range here, 191. All right. That's IWM and small caps in a nutshell. Let's get into our core list of companies, briefly taking a look through these, then we'll get into those three trade ideas. So Apple, at the uh, important pivot, 167. Remember that that's where we flushed from here. Now we're back testing, right? So as of right now, this is almost the equivalent, uh, or just think of it in the same light as that 208 in IWM, right? Do we roll over here? In which case, the short is underneath this 162.50. We talked about that this morning uh, for the rotation here. And then the more aggressive short is obviously underneath uh, last Friday's low, 160.85. But that's how that could unfold. So 167 is your pivot. Be on the lookout for any inverted hammers. That's obviously a more bearish indication. That's where I would start to expect the rollover. If we poke up and into it, uh, to me, it's not, it, it's really not that tradable, to be quite honest with you, noting how we've arrived here. So I would wait for something that does this, any then higher lows that support off of it, that starts to become more playable, either on the higher low that confirms 167 as a support, or on the break of the high for the continuation higher after that, all right? So that's how I'm looking at Apple in the short term here. Netflix up next, this one kind of chopping around, uh, not really giving us a whole lot of clean, actionable setups in terms of what's going on. We certainly have that same balance area. It's not nearly as clean is everything we've just seen. Uh, as of right now, this is actually looking more like a flush point right at the uh, 376.80, just on how we've arrived here. Again, the failed backtest and recapture of that 396.70. We know that it was a range from in here. That first inverted hammer right there was the nail in the coffin for lower. Again, another back test and resistance there, failed back test. Look for lower if this breaks at 376.80. Netflix really hasn't been showing that great of relative strength. So I would potentially keep this on your radar if we need shorts and the uh, range on SPY and the Qs starts to fall either back in for the look above and fail or break down in the first place. Okay, so Netflix, more of on the short radar. Tesla up next. Taking a look at this one, let's uh, grab the other tool and zoom in here. What we'll notice is 900 is your next upside level that needs to be recaptured. As of right now, I really like the fact that we did break down momentarily underneath 854, immediately recaptured and printed a green hammer on today's session. It's a little bit more promising that the sellers were not able to mount a serious move to the downside underneath that critical support, right? If I go on over to a smaller time frame chart, you can clearly see how important that level of support was at the 854, the fact that they could not materialize. And by they, I mean sellers, they could not materialize there. That strikes me as a slightly more bullish indication. Again, 900 is your next recapture area to the upside here on the daily for the rotation into your 945. Obviously, after that, larger break can happen into 1000, one step at a time. But I do like this as a bullish setup here. If we can get some more consolidation, daily flag gets put into place. Boom, breakouts take us higher. Uh, next up, we have Alibaba. What's going on in this one? Uh, inverted hammer from yesterday's session materializing to the downside. Our flush point at 104 is still in place. We've been harping on and on about that in the pre-market live streams. It's still in place. If we take out today's low, the rotation is here into 100, the psychological number. Anything that still fails at 110, it's bearish, right? We know that this is a big overhead range, overhead supply. If we fail to accept again into it, again, there's your flush point once again to get into 100. If we accept above 100, it's still not a long. I would need to see something that does this, and then maybe you can start trading for these gaps to fill overhead but one step at a time, it does look more bearish than bullish right now inside of Alibaba. Next up, Facebook. 
what's going on in this one, more similar to Netflix, to be quite honest with you, which I hate saying, but it's just the truth of the matter here. Uh, in terms of the setup, we were not able to get up into this area of prior support, which then flipped to resistance right there. That's the critical area, 216.35. I mean, it's not as bearish. We're not closing on the lows like we had in Netflix, but nonetheless, uh, we have lower highs in place, right, on a smaller time frame. Something like a 30-minute hourly would illustrate that clearly. If we can't really get back into that, uh, again, any flush of this takes us back down towards these lows, sort of a failed move back to the upside inside of Facebook. Look at this as just another lower high from here to here, failing at that big area, right? 216.35, that number does not change. We know that flushes can be produced underneath 202.75, we'll call it, or let's call it 202.50 actually, as I'm adjusting my cursor a little bit, um, and we'll actually pop that in with an official level, so I'm aware of it for tomorrow's session. There we go, 202.50 is your downside flush point if it breaks. Uh, 190 is the level to watch for the downside. Next up, we have NVIDIA sort of blasting through 240 without a care. You'll notice it's just consolidating in a range. I'm actually going to remove 240, and I'm going to pop in our range. Okay, so the top end is 244 roughly, and the bottom end is 23360. If we remain inside, obviously, you know the drill. It's just balance. If we take out the top, be aware of that resistance trend line just overhead. That would make me a little bit more skeptical of longs. Instead, I would love to see balance continue and then a break of those two things at the same time, and then trade for this larger range again, if time goes by, into 257.50. Now, it's not saying that we can't break out or it's not tradable if we get the move like tomorrow or Friday, but it just, you know, that resistance trend line gives me a little bit of an odd and funny feeling just looming overhead, all right? So that's what I have to the upside in NVIDIA, breakdown of the daily 200 SMA and the balance lows. You know the deal back down towards the support trend line around 218. That's a, that's a decent trade. Like if the broad marketplace is falling over, that's a probably a good short, decent range in here to trade through. I would watch that one to the downside uh, as well. Okay. Next up, we have Microsoft, uh, once again, 300, right? That's our level here. We're right at it. Okay. So just like in NVIDIA, a couple days of balance, but because we have that resistance trend line right overhead, because we're at this 300 pivot, I'd be a little bit careful here. Uh, if it does move, I would want to see something like this to get involved. Again, a higher low that then supports after the breakouts formed. That would give me a little bit more confidence that, yeah, we can pierce that resistance trend line. Because remember, on tomorrow's session, that trend line is going to be roughly, I don't know, 303. So sure, you could trade it for a $3 move higher, but how much higher is it going to go over the resistance trend line? Again, it just gives me a funny feeling, just like NVIDIA to the upside here. If it rolls over, so let's say we get something that looks like this. That's probably a better setup, right? On the look above and fail of 300 resisting off the uh, resistance trend line, move to the low end of the range. That's going to be here at 291.25, right? That's definitely more attractive, $8-ish if we just round down to be conservative, range to trade through on the short side here in Microsoft if we get the failed uh, move higher, correct? So that's what I'm watching out for there. Be a little bit careful with this one and uh, NVIDIA with those trend lines. Next and lastly, we have Amazon before we jump into these three trade ideas. Balance area, but nonetheless, lower highs have been forming. We know that this was the pivot area around 3100 Pulling back off of it, sure, this is still technically technically well within the bounds of short-term bull flag consolidation. Uh, but we'll see, right? One step at a time on a shorter time frame. So let's actually just go down and find it here. Uh, you could draw in a resistance trend line and use this as your sort of heads up indicator if that starts to break. And depending on when this is tomorrow, could be anywhere from, I don't know, let's hover the cursor here. Uh, let's see, 34.55 up to 30.60, depending on time of day, right? It could also just be yesterday's high of day if that breaks. Maybe you look for the rotation to 3,100. That certainly could be on your radar into the end of the week. Something to watch out for. That would be the flag breakout on the daily. After that, just like everything else, your targets, the resistance trend line and your daily 50 SMA. A little bit more room here in Amazon to trade for to the upside. So that becomes slightly more attractive as opposed to Microsoft and NVIDIA, which we just looked at. Underneath the low of today's session, that's where the, uh, you know, we go to hell in a handbasket, as I've been saying recently. That's underneath 2984 fails all the way down closer to 2760, noting that we have highs, Lower highs, lower highs, equal low here. It's definitely going to be a flush point, right? Interaction number one, interaction number two, number three, that sets it up for the breakdown, potentially going lower after that. Again, it doesn't look like that's likely into the end of the week, but something to be aware of, right? It's an awareness thing. If we take out this low, the fact that there's not a whole lot of structure underneath us here inside of Amazon. So enough rambling on about our core list of companies. Let's get into the juicy ones. So SNAP Snapchat, uh, first up on the radar, you might be thinking like, what's up with Snapchat? Like this thing's, you know, no one's, no one's trading Snapchat anymore. Well, when there's 
good setup. I would like to point it out. Let's come in with the resistance trend line first of all. Do something like that. That's going to act as a target. Let's zoom back in here. What you'll notice if I grab the other tool now and do something like this, we have a pressure cooker top that's forming right here. Hammer candle that formed on today's session. Slightly nuanced higher low from here to there. If we take out today's high of day, I would look for a rotation here into the pressure cooker top. I would shave off a majority of your position, three quarters of it at least, and then monitor for continuation to see if we can get into that resistance trend line. Stop loss goes underneath today's low if you're a swing trader or if we get sort of a look above and fail back into today's range. So just a failed break, failed move over the day's high. Maybe that's your stop if you're a more conservative scalper looking for a quick in and out uh, and we don't see that momentum follow through so that's the move here inside of snapchat that's where i would place the stop as well if you're a more aggressive short and you want to play with the daily trend i wouldn't fault you for that you can look at this as a double top but your short is underneath this level right here the neckline breakdown at 34.85 because of the hammer that printed on today's session and because i do believe that the marketplace wants to break out of its four-day balance I'm starting to look for that here inside of Snapchat. And again, I pointed out the very slightly nuanced higher low that was produced on today's session. So that's Snap in a nutshell. Next up is going to be on PLUG for Plug Power, uh, EV charging company, right? This one, daily balance, right? This one's fairly clean as well, uh, you know, not really being so sporadic. Notice that the three-day highs are nearly perfect here around that 25.75. If that breaks, look left, very emotional breakdown was happening in here. What would the target be? I'd start looking at that daily 200 SMA, the green line on your chart. Let me draw the level in. It's going to be your prior highs as well, right around 29. Okay. So that's the upside move. I'm not saying that it has to get here all in one day, but there's fairly emotional activity to our left. I would imagine that the move is, uh, you know, uh, easily produced higher as opposed to a grindy sort of back and forth takes a lot of volume to get up through it. Correct. So that's what I'm watching out for here inside of plug. If it never breaks out, not interested. And obviously if it breaks down underneath the two day lows, not interested interested as well, because it could be likely that we come back down and actually fill the gap from the earnings move down towards 2258. So it needs to break the three day highs for your longs to get closer to that upside target. Next up, what do we have? It's the last one on our list, TGT for our target. Okay. So consumer staples, good relative strength, especially in a high inflation environment. People need to buy clothing, food, uh, things that you get at target generally. Uh, and again, after earnings, nice balance on the gap up. If we take out the two day highs, look for higher. If we take out the two day lows, look for lower great set. Like this is a great setup because you can easily go either way, whatever direction the broad marketplace wants to go. If you flush the two day lows, you have the gap to trade for. I'm not saying it fills all in one day. You know, the drill, you're just looking for a lack of support in there. And if we take out the two-day highs and the market's moving higher, what do we have to the left? I would start targeting this other pivot right around in here, right? That's our first significant area where the market comes higher, finds sellers, and that's where we make the significant drive lower after this little run, all right? So that's what we have to the upside on a break of the two-day highs. That number is 227.50 to get us into 235.50. And again, if the two-day lows break, 218.50, look for the uh, gap to start to fill. Again, I'm not saying it fills all in one day, but the close is technically way down there around 201, all right? That's what I've got for you in today's midweek market update. I know it came out late. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, drop me in the comment section the uh, code word night owl, and I'll know that you watched on the Wednesday night and not in the morning on Thursday, right? So I hope to see you around the channel. Uh, if you enjoyed today's video or learned anything new, let me know in the comments section or by giving the video a simple thumbs up. Uh, don't forget our secondary channel is linked down below in the description where we do 10 to 12 video ideas every single day. And with all of that being said, I wish you a green trading week.